Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dee and this is Market Stalkers. I've got something slightly different for you this time around. I'm reviewing a new trading platform brought to you by Cost and Tech. Now I found it via earn to trade while I was doing their mini gauntlet trader assessment challenge. If you're not familiar with earn to trade, they are a remote prop trading company who help traders scale their capital by leveraging their existing skills. And all you have to do is pass their trader assessment exam for a small monthly fee because obviously they need to see that their money will be safe in your hands. If you want to know more, click over here to watch how I did in their trader assessment challenge. But today I want to show you the features of the Finamark platform that is included for free while you're doing the mini gauntlet. Having a good decent platform and decent charting tools, that's kind of important, right? Now I said Finamark license through earn to trade is free, not only while you're doing the challenge, but also when you get funded. The platform is quite new and I've not really seen anyone do a proper review of all the features and I figured since I'll definitely keep using it, why not show you some of the pretty cool stuff that comes with it? The setup of this platform is very very easy, it took me like all of 10 minutes to work it out. The windows that you see me moving, they refer to them as the widgets. A widget can be anything, it can be these dome ladders or a chart or anything really. So let's start from the beginning. Here are all the available widgets. I'm going to drag a chart on. Then you're going to select the account that the widget is going to be connected to. To resize the widgets, you have to click in this lower right diagonal corner and then drag it to whatever size you want it to be. And the final step is to actually select the symbol that you want the chart to display. There are two ways that you can do this. You can just type in CL, for example, and then look for the contract and click on it. But there's another easier way to do this. Go back to the same menu and then type in forward slash followed by the symbol that you're after and press enter. What this does is it gives you the front mouth contract, the one with the most volume, automatically, right? Very useful. I'm just going to expand this a little bit more. Now one thing to note that anytime you drag a new widget on, as it is now, uh, you have to reselect the account that you want the widget to be connected to. But there is kind of like a little hack that they've included to make this uh, process a little bit easier, especially when it comes to the chart and the dome. So let me pop a dome widget on here very quickly and I'll show you what it's all about. All right, here we go. Now look at here, there's this link button. If you click and drag that into the dome, it automatically copies whatever asset you have on the chart. So just thought I would mention it because it's not like immediately obvious what, uh, what the link button does. So that's what it does. But for now, let's just focus on the chart for a second. When you first open up the chart, uh, by default, you will have this auto scale Y axis button switched on. Now what that does as you're kind of going backwards uh, through the chart or even forwards through the chart, it's going to scale the candles automatically so that you don't have to do anything to them and they will still fit nicely on the screen. Now if you want to scale the X axis, this is where the prices are, you can do that too. So what you do there is you hold down the shift key and then you use the scroll mouse button so it's pretty easy to make the candles kind of squashed or long. If you want to make the candles narrow or wide, you just use the regular mouse scroll button. Let's talk about the order panel. Now the order panel, when you first open up a chart, is there by default. So if you see this button, buy market, sell market. But if for some reason you don't want to have the panel on there, you would hide it by clicking on this button. Pressing it again brings it back. When you click on either buy market or sell market, the platform will actually open a dialog box. So it's not going to put in an order right away. Um, and what you'll see there is an order ticket now what this actually is, it will create a bracket order, OCO orders, one cancels other. As you may know, prop firms are generally not that happy with anyone trading without a stop loss. 
So what this will enable you to do is to set not just your entry, but also your stop loss and your take profit orders. Once you're ready, just click on the confirm button and your order will be live on the market. Once the order is open, once it's in, you will be able to see it on the chart. If you want to change any part of the order, like your stop loss or your take profit prices, you will be able to do that by just taking uh, the order and actually dragging it across the chart. However, you will still need to press confirm to confirm the change. Now, if you don't want to have this dialog box popping up at you every time you're trying to change something, there is a way to switch on the one click trade option. And then anytime you drag a take profit or a stop loss, uh, it's just gonna change it without actually asking you to confirm. So that setting is here. I've just switched it on. And now I'm gonna show you how to enter your orders just by uh, clicking on the chart itself. Once you have your order open, if you do control shift click, that will place a stop order. If you just do control click, that places a limit order. Now I usually enter my orders on the dome, but if you just want to use the chart and you don't want to look at the dome, since dome is not really that necessary for orders, plus, you know, staring at the depth of market ladder can actually cause stress and anxiety because you're so much more aware of the movement, then this might be a good option for you. Now, if we don't have that one click trade setting on, then obviously every time you try and pop in an order, it will give you the confirmation dialog box again. Okay, let's uh, move on to the indicator studies that are included with this platform. To get to the available indicators, there is a button that opens up the studies, indicator options. Now, over here, you know, you have standard complement of uh, indicators, but there is actually, <laughs> there's actually a bit of a hidden section here that isn't immediately obvious. There's this uh, add new section button at the bottom here. And what that does, it opens up like a whole bunch of other indicators that we didn't see before. Now the whole idea is that section two is actually that window below the chart. So you can add things like MACD divergence or RSI or anything that doesn't necessarily have to be overlaid across the candles themselves. You can also search the indicators by name and you click on the section where you want them to be placed and then type in the name of the indicator. For example, you can look for volume. Oh, and that reminds me that you can put volume in the first section as well. And the way you would do that, so let's delete that. So you go to section one, then you go into candlesticks, a little cog, and it says volume in background. So save that. And then you have the volume in the same sort of section as your candlesticks. If you want to change from just pure time candlesticks to tick charts, click on this chart settings and then go into the series type and in the drop down menu you have a you know, few options where you can also define the series size to whatever you want. So that's a tick chart and then if you want to change to a volume chart you would do the same thing. There we go, pretty simple. Now I prefer my time based charts for many many reasons so I'm just going to put this back. And then we have a button that can show you upcoming events. Now, this one is uh, pretty handy if you've ever forgotten that there's like a high impact release. Uh, these little flags on the chart can give you a heads up that maybe you should consider getting out of the trade. <laughs> and that's another thing. There is uh, a calendar widget. So you don't really have to go to Google or to Econoday or anywhere else to see what kind of upcoming events you have. They also mark uh, the releases, the impact of the releases with these dots. So obviously three red dots means that the release could have a high impact on prices. And typically those kinds of releases are the ones that the prop firms typically don't allow you to trade through. You know, for a very good reason. The more high impact the release, the higher the risk of your stop losses or targets not being filled. If you click on the release itself, the area will expand to give you more detail about the actual release. And I mean, to me, this is like having trading economics right in the platform itself uh, without having to go anywhere. Pretty handy. Let's move on to the depth of market ladder, aka the dome. Like I said before, trading through the dome is a matter of personal choice. It's not necessary. It doesn't really show you much detail of anything that the price won't show you in the end. 
Uh, but yeah, I'm a little bit set in my ways at this point and I quite like the convenience of it. Very nice modern looking dome. Let me quickly open up an order so that I can show you what happens. All right, now once the order is open, the dome actually shows you how much you will gain or lose on this open position right next to the prices. So it's very, very useful. I really like that. Now, if you want to close the order, you would simply hover over the open price, which then turns into a close button. You would click close and the order will be gone. By default, clicking on the dome will open that same dialog box with the order ticket that you've seen me do when I was clicking from the chart. So in that respect, it's not really your standard dome where you just kind of click anywhere and it opens a market order right away, but it can be set up to be like that. Now on the chart, there was like that one click trade setting, but on the dome, you actually have to go into platform settings to do the same thing. What you're looking for is kind of like a master one click trading option. Just make sure that you click save after you've changed that. And now the dome is going to behave like any other dome that you might have been used to up until now. So wherever you click, it's going to pop in an order. But what I've discovered working with their order tickets and their bracket orders, I've discovered that I don't actually like the normal behavior of the dome. Uh, because sometimes, you know, you're just clicking around and you accidentally place an order without even realizing it. So now I actually prefer to have the dialog box. Now the dialog box enables you to create bracket orders. If you don't know what a bracket order is, basically behind the scenes, your entry, your stop loss and your targets are actually three different orders. So what a bracket does, it effectively connects the stop loss and the target so that whichever one gets hit first, it cancels the other order. Now on most other platforms, bracket orders are not exactly the norm. So you have to do quite a bit of fumbling around to set them up yourself. But Finamark have obviously decided to flip that around. So now the bracket orders are the standard. And if you want anything else, you actually have to go through you know, a couple of steps to consciously change that. But once your orders are in, there are additional options to make the stop loss into either a break even or a trailing stop loss. Again, it's very easy. You just click on the order itself and you'll have a couple of additional options that will appear. If you click on break even checkbox, you will get another little area that appears. And basically here you would put how much profit do you want the trade to be in before the platform modifies the stop loss and sets it to a break even point. So for example, here I put 10 ticks. So that means when I'm 10 ticks in profit, the stop loss is going to be moved to the break even point. Now, if you want a trailing stop loss, that's slightly different because it's gonna keep trailing by the amount of ticks that you set in this area. Now, since I'm already talking about brackets and orders, it's worth noting that if you've opened up a trade as a bracket order, but then at any point of your trade life, you decide to remove the stop or the target, removing either one of them is going to remove the other order as well because they're connected. At that point, they're no longer bracket, but instead you will have to re-enter individual orders. So let me show you what happens. So here I've now clicked to remove my take profit target to move it somewhere else, but the stop loss is removed as well. So now I'm actually in an unprotected position. To get the orders back, I have to manually enter each one of them again. But if you try to enter through the bracket order yet again, using your pre-save stop loss and take profit values, then this won't be connected to your entry position. So, you know, it was still attempt to put in some kind of a bracket that won't make much sense. So just make sure to remove the ticks from the bracket. And then it's just gonna pop in a regular order that's not connected to anything else. One final point about these uh, broken brackets is that if you do end up closing your trade manually for whatever reason, because you no longer have that bracket, all of the other orders are going to stay. So here you also have uh, one of the trailing stop losses that I placed earlier, and they're all still there, you know, so you will have to flatten the account to make sure those are cleared or to get rid of them manually like I'm doing here. To flatten the account, you will need the positions widget. Flattening the account, it's kind of like your nuclear button. 
it clears all of the existing orders open and unopen across the entire account. It's a good practice to flatten your account at the end of every trading day just to make sure that you're not leaving any lingering orders behind. You can also have the reconstructed tape widget. If you're not familiar with this tool, reconstructed tape allows you to kind of filter uh, the, uh, the large versus the small orders in a very particular way. Whereas the regular time and sales, which you can also put here, will show you all the actual limit orders that are being filled, but it won't show you whether the orders you're seeing are single orders or whether they're a part of one massive order request. And that's where this reconstructed tape uh, can come in handy if you use that kind of analysis in your approach. And just for reference, here's the time and sales widget. Again, click and drag, select the symbol. So you can stare at all the orders being filled until your eyes are bloodshot. <laughs> I'm just going to put the reconstructed tape next to this time and sales window so you can see that they do and can offer slightly different information. That was all the features of the Finemark platform at the moment. And I'm sure they're going to keep coming up with more and more updates. It's innovative, it's easy to use. In fact, it's one of the most user-friendly interfaces that I've ever come across. And that matters so much. As a prompt trader, every new trading company that you go to will have their own idea of which platform they want you to use which is fine, but generally you don't want to be spending the best days of your life trying to figure out how to confidently enter, modify and close a trade. So having new platforms that are both cost effective and intuitive will become even more important as the remote prop trading industry continues to evolve, becoming more and more popular as a way to generate an additional source of income for almost anyone who's willing to dedicate the time and effort to properly master the craft of trading. Thank you guys for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you all next time.